back to my channel Max with Armin. Uh, this is another video on probability. Yeah, I'm going to look at tree diagrams and also show you how you can use tree diagrams to calculate probabilities. If you have not subscribed to my channel Maths with Armin, please do subscribe. I hope you will enjoy this video. So let's start. In this video, we're going to show you how to draw tree diagrams and then to determine probabilities from the tree diagram using the tree diagram. And then there's going to be an exercise worksheet. Now let's look at another representation that can assist us with calculating probabilities, right? Tree diagrams. Uh, they are used to provide a visual representation in an organized way of a sample space and to calculate the uh, resulting probabilities, right? Uh, the outcomes of events can be found at the end of each branch there. So the purpose there, it gives us a visual representation in an organized way of a sample space and to calculate the relevant probabilities there. Just consider a very simple tree diagram. Let's consider the um, event of flipping a single fair coin. So first of all, the coin can either which flips can either land heads or it can land tails and it's equally likely so it's 50 percent or 0 0.5 tossing a head or tossing a tail right and the sample space here you can see is just heads or tails and the probability of a head is 0 0.5 and the probability of a tail is 0 0.5 very simple free diagram you can also represent the sample space using a tree diagram. So let's look, uh, consider the case where we flip a fair coin twice. So there's the uh, uh, coin. So if we flip it once, the first flip, it can either be heads or it can be tails, right? And the probability of getting a head is 1 over 2 or 0 0.5. Probability of getting a tail is also 0 0.5. Now for the second flip, so if I have heads, then the next could be that I can get uh, heads again or I can get a tail. And the same with the other one, it can be heads or tails, right? And the probability again of a head is 0, 0,5 and tail is 0, 0,5. Let's list the outcomes. So after flipping it a coin twice, we can have, as you can see there, we can have, just follow the color, heads and heads there. And then we have heads and tail. And then we can have tails and heads, and then we can have tails and tails. So those are the four outcomes that you can have. Let's calculate the probability. The probability of a head is 0, 0,5, right? So those are the outcomes there. And the probability of uh, getting heads and heads, heads is 0, 0,5 times 0, 0,5, and we calculate that, that should be 0, 0,25. The same way we can calculate heads and tails, it's 0, 0,5 times 0, 0,5. Tails and heads, 0, 0,5 times 0, 0,5. Tails and tails, 0, 0,5 times 0, 0,5. And you can see the sum of that, that's exactly 1. To illustrate the use of tree diagrams, let's consider an example. We've got a packet containing some paper clips. We have two red, three green, and five blue paper clips, right? One paper clip is randomly selected from the packet, the color recorded and then replaced, the emphasis here, we put it back in the packet. Another paper clip is then randomly selected from the packet and the color is recorded. And we can continue that way, right? So we've got three questions here. We'll show you how can we represent this information in an organized way as a tree diagram. Then we're going to calculate the prob two probability questions that we're going to do that. Now let's construct the tree diagram. Let's look at the given information. We've got two red, three green, and five blue. And here we've noted that we replace. Once we take out a paper clip, we put it back. So let's start. Let's have the first pick. So if I my first pick it can either be a red paper clip or it can be a green one or it can be a blue one. How many red paper clips are there? Two, and then we have a total of ten. So I'm just using some nice numbers here. 2 out of 10, then I get 3 over 10, and then I get 5 over 10, right? Now I can have my sec item, and I put it back. So I've, once I take out a, a paper clip, I replace it again. So in my second pick, I can again choose either a red, a green, or a blue. 
and I, exactly the same after I've chosen maybe a green, I can take a red, a green, and a blue. After I've taken possibly a blue, I can take a red, a green, and a blue. Because I've replaced my sample space, size has not changed there. So I still have, have exactly the same probability values, 2 over 10, 3 over 10, and 5 over 10. And that's exactly the same there. Okay. Now let's list the outcomes and let's list the probabilities. So there's the outcome 3-3 three, three, and what will, uh, sorry, RR. And we just follow the colors and that's 2 over 10 times, and the probability would be 2 over 10 times 2 over 10 because they are independent events here. So 2 over 10 times 2 over 10 gives me 4 over 100 and 4 over 100 simplified is 1 over 25, right? The next one is going to be a red followed by a green and that will be 2 over 10 times 3 over 10. I've color coded to make it easier. That gives me 6 over 100 and we simplify that at 3 over 50. The same way I get a red followed by a blue. So that's 2 over 10 times 5 over 10. That's 10 over 100 and that's 1 over 10. And I can do the same there. That's a green followed by a red and then a green followed by a green and a green followed by a blue. So I can get all my outcomes there. There's my outcomes. I can calculate the probabilities. There's the probabilities for green and red and green and green and green and blue. Simplify that. Those are the values I get there. In exactly the same way, I can calculate the probability. That's 5. I can just follow the colors. 5 over 10 times 2 over 10. Then 5 over 10 times 3 over 10. And 5 over 10 times 5 over 10. Calculating that and then, right? Quick bit of arithmetic. If you add up 1 over 5 plus 2 over 5 plus 1 over 10, etc., up to 1 over 4, the sum of these probabilities will be exactly 1. And just double check that, give you a chance to, to try it. Can you see? It's exactly 1. So there I've completed my tree diagram. As you can see, it's a nice organized way. You know, you can see that's your first peak and your second peak. It even shows your outcomes, and you can actually see the probabilities there right i've just used the colors to make it easier for you to follow what's happening so there i've completed my tree diagram so that's the first part of my question drawing the tree diagram now let's see how we can use our tree diagram so there i've got a completed tree diagram i've just taken some of the other calculations out so just make it a little bit more simple uh, simpler there to use we want the probability of selecting first a red followed by a blue right so i've got red followed by a blue and this is my i'm going to use my product rule because they are independent events so a will be red and b will be blue so let's see probability of a red then a blue so i follow a red and then blue can you see there i go along that way and along that way and there's my outcome red blue and what is that there that is going to be 2 over 10 times 5 over 10 probability of red times probability of blue 2 over 10 times 5 over 10 it gives me 10 over 100 which is 1 over 10 which obviously is 10 percent right so they have calculated that one now let's look at the second question here the second question we want to determine the probability of randomly selecting a green and a blue paper clip let's get our tree diagram back there's our tree diagram now, because we are replacing the paper clips every time it is selected, the events of selecting green and blue would be independent events, right? So let's look at our uh, um, tree diagram here and see where do we see green and blue. So if I look there, I'll be see. I want to get the probability of green and blue. There we have a green and blue. So I can just write that as probability of green and blue. But we didn't specify which one comes first. So green and blue and the other possibility could also be, or we could also look for blue and green. If I look for blue and green, can you see there's our blue and green? So I can have, because I have or, we will add the probability of green and blue plus the probability of blue and green. So I've got a choice between green and blue and blue and green. Now, 
because we have independent events, the probability of green and blue becomes a, the product of the probability of green with the probability of blue. And we'll add to that, of course, the same way here, probability of blue and green would be the product of the blue and the green, probability of the blue times the probability of the green. Let's look at our tree diagram, probability of green. There we have probability of green, which is 3 over 10. And probability of getting a blue is 5 over 10. And we're going to add to that probability of blue again. There we can see probability of blue is 5 over 10. And the probability of green here is 3 over 10. If we simplify that, we, we add the two products, we get the probability being exactly 3 over 10 or 30%, right? So if we have independent events, you see here we said green and blue. We didn't specify which one first. We said green and blue. So green and blue, I have also a choice of blue and green. Now, let's take the same problem, but we're going to modify it slightly, okay? As you can see, we still have our two red and three green and five blue or paper clips, but now we say not replaced. You see, so the previous one we had replaced, so let's see what the tree diagram looks like if we say not replaced. So there we have two red, three green, and five blue, and we're noting that it says no replacement. So let's start off there. Then we want to get our tree diagram. So again, there our first pick, we can pick a red, a green, or a blue okay and again there because we have two red it's going to be two over ten so first pick three over ten and the blue is going to be five over ten but now we say there's no replacement so once you take out a red you started off with ten um, paper clips now you have one less paper clip right so my second pick I'm also going to get the red green and blue now I'm also going to get red, green, and blue for my second pick, and red, green, and blue. But let's see what the probabilities would be now. Because my sample space has now changed, you see, this is now not independent. The second pick depends on what happens on the first pick. So if I had two red, and I already took out one of the reds, I have, how many reds do I have left? Now I only have one red left. But I haven't replaced the red, so I now have, 1 over 9. I haven't taken a green, so I still have my 3 greens, but I only have 9, so that's 3 over 9. Okay, I haven't taken any blue, so that's 5, but now it's 5 over 9. As you can see, with no replacement, that denominator of 10 now becomes a denominator of 9. You can quickly do with a little bit of uh, maths here. 1 plus 3 plus 5, it still gives me 9 over 9. Right, so just be careful here. Yeah, I've got 3 over 10, so now I'm going to have 9 paper clips left. I haven't taken a red, so I still have 2 over 9. I've taken a green, so instead of having 3 greens, I now only have 2 to choose from. I haven't taken a blue, so that's still 5 over 9. The same way here, as you can see, that's a denominator of 10, there I've got a denominator of 9. I haven't taken a red yet, so it's 2 over 9. I haven't taken a green, so that's 3 over 9. But I've taken a blue, so I don't have 5 blues to choose from now. I have 4, so that's 4 over 9. We can see the sum of the probabilities on these three branches is 1. The sum there is 1, and the sum there is 1. Okay? I can write down the outcomes again. So the outcomes there is exactly red and red and red and green. Right? You can, there I can calculate, and you see now I get 2 over 10 times 1 over 9, so that gives you 1 over 45. And the same red and green is going to be, you can just follow the colors there. That's 2 over 10 times 3 over 9, which gives me 1 over 15. Red and blue is 2 over 10 times 5 over 9, which gives you 1 over 9. Okay? And then if I take uh, green and red and green and green and green and blue, and then blue and red and blue and green and then blue and blue, and if I calculate the probabilities, that's what I get there. I calculate the probabilities, I get that there. And if you add up all these fractions, you can just double check, you'll get exactly 1. Okay, so there's the tree diagram with no replacement. Note there, 
There, there the sample space size is 10. There the sample space size here is 9. Now let's consider an example here. We want to determine probability of a blue then a blue. So that's uh, dependent events because there's no replacement. And therefore it will be the probability of the first event times the probability of the second event after the first has happened. So then it's blue, probability of blue times the probability of blue after blue. And there's the probability of getting a blue, that's 5 over 10. And then the probability of getting a blue again, but now it was no replacement. So that is times 4 over 9. And that gives us the... 5 over 10 times 4 over 9 gives me 2 over 9. So that is blue then blue, and this is one with no replacement. Now let's come to the most important part here, and this is the exercise worksheet for you now to, to practice. Uh, I've taken uh, questions from previous external question papers, and I've referenced them. Some of the questions I've slightly adapted. This question, we've got two identical bags filled with balls. Bag A consists of three pink and two yellow balls, while bag B consists of three pink and four yellow balls. It is equally likely that bag A or bag B is chosen. Now, first of all, a bag is chosen randomly, and then a ball is chosen from the bag. Now, this information you have to represent on a B diagram, and then you've got two probability questions to answer. In this question here, we have one bag, but in this bag, you've got an unknown number of orange and two green identical balls. The ball is randomly selected from the bag and the color is recorded, and then the ball is returned to the bag. So this is replacement here. The second ball is then selected from the bag and the color is recorded, and the bag ball is also replaced to the bag. Here you have to draw a tree diagram, and there are a few probability questions to answer. We have a three diagram question with three probability questions to be answered. Last question here, we are also a three diagram has to be drawn and then there's one probability question to be answered. Now let's come to the most important part here and this is the exercise worksheet for you now to, to practice. Uh, I've taken uh, questions from previous external question papers and I've referenced them. Some of the questions I've slightly adapted. Here are the solutions to question 1. There's 1.1 1 .1 and 1.2 and 1.3. 1.1 1 .1, 1 .1, there's a uh, tree diagram and then there are two probability questions there. Here's a solution to question two, three sub questions. Here's a solution to question three, also with three sub questions. A solution to question four with two sub questions. I do hope you enjoyed this uh, video on um, tree diagrams. Uh, I've also prepared other videos on other probability topics and also on other mathematics topics. I really suggest that you also view those uh, videos there as well. And please, if you have not subscribed to my channel, Maths with Armin, please subscribe. Thank you. I hope you have enjoyed this video and have learned something.